So pretty much from the beginning of Surface Duo's life cycle, people like myself and others have been doing the best they could to find a way to make the camera performance better. And the simplest, best way to do this is to install a port of something called Gcam, the Google camera software found on Pixel devices. Port that over to another device and install it. And guess what? Camera performance is going to be much better. However, this has not been a linear uh, progression, right? Sometimes these cameras work, sometimes they don't work very well at all on your device. And Surface Duo being a very strange device with strange shaped screens, uh, there were a lot of problems running Gcam. Now that we are on a more modern version of Android though, there are some ports that do actually work quite well. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what I believe to be the best. Now, there may be people that will disagree and say, well, if you change this setting, if you do this, that, and the other thing, uh, these other versions might be better. But this is my favorite, my pick for the best Gcam port to use on the original Surface Duo, as well as on Surface Duo 2, because there is still utility to using it on Duo 2, even though Duo 2's stock app does a much better job taking photos than the stock app on the original Surface Duo, there are still good reasons to use a Gcam port, and we will look at those uh, as we go through. But let's look at the original Surface Duo first. Now, what I did is I tested three different ports that are you know, seemingly rather popular. So those ports will be labeled as MGC, which is by BSG. There is also the AGC ports by someone called Big Kaka. Yes, that is what they are choosing to be called on these here internets. The other one is by Hazel Hasley, is actually what that says. <laughs> it is LMC. So I installed all three of those and I did a whole bunch of shots and a whole bunch of little tests to determine which ones I thought were the best, again, on the original Surface Duo. And if we take a look here at these, we'll go through them really quickly. So this first one is the BSG port labeled MGC. This is very confusing, but we'll, we'll wrap this all up at the end. And you can see here that it looks pretty good, okay? Your uh, viewfinder is on all of these going to be a little bit blurry, but it's really not too bad. Now, the first thing you're going to do with these ports, and you're going to do this with all of these, is I'm going to recommend that you hit your settings right there and you turn on HDR plus enhanced. Now, what that's going to do is make your pictures look a lot better, but it's also going to add a little bit of shutter lag. You'll see here when I click on the shutter, you have to wait for that thing to fill up. Not too bad at all. And then the result, I think, is going to be quite a bit better for having used uh, that particular setting. You may also want to go into your settings here and click on more settings. And look for things like auto night sight, which you definitely want to have turned on. Some of them may have uh, things to turn on, like focus tracking and things like that. But this is the MGC port. I think overall it is quite solid, really no complaints with it at all. It really doesn't ever do anything super, super weird. If we go home and we go into the Big Kaka version, the AGC version, it's actually really, really similar. You do have some additional settings, things like these Leica things up here, which I've tried and I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but I just don't really see a huge difference in them. It's not something I'm going to really dive into or recommend necessarily using, but it does a pretty good job. The settings, everything looks really, really similar and it is pretty solid as well. And then we have the LMC version, which We'll see if it shows it here. A lot of the time the viewfinder just got really bright. It seemed like it was just making things brighter than it really should have been. And again, same sorts of settings are going to apply here as well. But now let's look at some photo samples because that's what I think are actually going to matter when it comes to this conversation. So here we are looking at the stock camera. Now this was actually fairly dark and the result is it looks terrible. It is quite grainy. We're losing a lot of focus there. It does not look good. This next one is the MGC port, and I think it did a pretty good job. Not, you know, incredible, but it did a lot better job than what the stock one did. Now, the AGC and the LMC, I think both over sharpen and over bright. I think both of these are way too harsh. I think this was the better shot. Now, if we go into extreme darkness here, the stock camera is almost unusable. MGC really makes a massive difference, does a pretty good job, and then the other two are actually really, really similar. I think that probably a little bit more noise 
to be found here on this one, which I think is the AGC or Big Taka version, but all three of them did quite well. With portrait mode, the stock camera is very, very grainy. This was not super well lit, but that was kind of intentional. We're kind of pushing it to its edge use case and it just does not do a great job. MGC obviously does zoom in a little bit by default, but this is a far and away better picture than what we just now looked at. Jumping over to Big Kaka, we have a little bit of some softness here. Like maybe it didn't quite focus correctly, which seems to happen with some of these ports. And then on the LMC, our colors are boosted a little bit unnaturally. I'm, I'm pinker here than I should have been. Now, bear in mind that portrait mode, unlike on a lot of these things, is only gonna work when it sees a face. When you're pointing it at a regular object, you're not gonna get that soft bokeh like you can on other devices with their portrait mode. In some better lighting, the stock camera does okay, but then again, you know, let's jump over to MGC, which I think is a little bit warmer and looks a little bit more vibrant, which I like. Details are very good. Then we have AGC and then uh, LMC really dials up the colors a lot more, but that's kind of going to be a point of preference. They all look pretty decent when you're outside. Okay, so which one of these do I think is the best? For me, and I took several more pictures that we're not going to deep dive into because it would take forever. The one that I think was most consistently taking the pictures I preferred and that the user interface was the simplest, not a whole lot of weird stuff going on, this just the easiest to use is going to be MGC. Now it's the 8.4.600 blah, 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 blah. I will link to this in the description labeled as my preferred Duo One camera. So this is the one I would be using. It is very, very good. Low light is much better. And in normal light, the colors are boosted, but not as much as LMC. It looks more natural to me. Details look solid. Overall, really, really decent camera. Now, Duo Two. Obviously, Duo Two does not need quite as much help as Duo One did. So this was not as big of a deal, but it still does actually benefit from a Gcam port. Now there's another problem though with Duo Two. If you go and install these same ports, you have to do some tweaking to make things work correctly. And on some of these, I could not find a way to make it work correctly. If you're using HDR Plus Enhanced or Night Sight, where it's taking a longer focus or longer exposure, I should say, of these images. The pictures just don't save. So I was only able to find one camera that I could change a setting and I could consistently make this work correctly. And that was the LMC version. Now, luckily this also takes really nice pictures on Duo 2. So first thing we're gonna do, again, link to this in the description, labeled as my pick for Duo 2. Let's look at the settings that need to be altered in order to make this thing work. Okay, in the LMC camera, we're going to click right there. We're going to make sure HDR Plus Enhanced is the one we're on, the very last one. Let's go into more settings. Now, for this part, I do have to give a shout out here to someone that some of you in the community may know, uh, Dale Ross, for this GitHub page where he actually explains how to do both of these things. This is where I found out about fixing the not saving thing, this bit right here. This was a real problem and he was able to find a fix uh, with help of this person whose name I cannot read. So thanks to Dale for this. I will link to this in the description. He's trying to create like a, a new noise model or something to make the pictures look even better. You can check that out yourself. It's not something I've taken the time to dabble with at all, but let's dive into the actual process here. So we're gonna go into settings like I just showed you. We're gonna scroll down to additional cameras and we're going to turn on telecamera and wide camera that's actually going to enable them. Then we're gonna go back, scroll up, then we are going to go into photo processing. We are going to make sure enable patcher is turned on, and then we're going to click on main camera, advanced settings, and then we're gonna look for skip metadata check and turn that to on. Now you're gonna to have to do this. Let's go back and back again for the tele camera. Okay, go back in, advanced settings, skip metadata check on. Back again, go into the, it went too far, or I was wrong, photo processing, wide camera. Do this for all three of these and your photos should, at that point, begin saving. So at that point, everything should be functioning correctly. So now let's take a look at what you actually get. What is the benefit of having done this? We're gonna use a similar picture to last time. This is low light. Now we know that Duo 2's low light performance has actually gotten a lot better. However, you can see here, it is still not great, okay? This did not focus well. It's very, very grainy. It does not look good at all. On this LMC camera, do I need to even say anything? 
do I do I need to break this down for you at all, or can I just show you the picture? It's 50 times better. What about when it comes to regular photography stuff where the lighting isn't terrible? Well, this is the stock camera, and I think that it's it's fine, right? It's a little bit bland. It's not super colorful, but it's sharp enough. It looks okay. It's probably a little overexposed for me. What about LMC? Well, LMC looks better, doesn't it? The exposure is correct. It is a little bit dark and a little bit more contrast, a little bit more color. This is a better photo, and this does extend to the other lenses. Here's the wide angle on the stock camera, and what's interesting here is this looks more colorful and more contrasty than the standard lens did. It's a little bit inconsistent. Well, how about LMC? Once again, it just looks cleaner to me. It looks like there's a bit more detail. The colors, the contrast just look to be improved all the way around. Now, I actually took a photo with the telephoto, but on the duo stock camera, it didn't save. So that's the thing that still happens <coughs> from time to time on the stock camera. On LMC, though, it did save. And as you can see here, let's zoom way in. This looks pretty darn good to me, actually. You can actually see some grass seed and stuff that's been, been laid down in some of the bald areas, and I'm hoping we'll uh, spring to life once we warm up a little bit. Overall, it is a really nice improvement even on Duo 2. Now, of course, Duo 2 has some cool stuff with the stock camera where it shows the pictures on the left side as you take them. You can open up Google Photos over there, but sometimes weird things happen and pictures get saved twice if Photos is active while you're taking pictures. So there are reasons to still use the stock app, but I would recommend downloading this LMC build and having this thing on your phone in case you need to take a really good picture, you want to take something that's better, or you're in low light, I think that's a really, really good time to uh, have that LMC camera there at your disposal. Now, one thing I do need to do here is I'm going to show you how to actually install these things, because I know that a lot of you might not have any idea what to do here. So let's go back to the phone, and this is the LMC link, as you can see here. We're just going to click on the top one, and we're gonna let that thing download. Click on download and we should be off and running. Now, once that is done, you can either get it from your notification shade, or you can go into your downloads and let's go ahead and click on that APK. And you may get a pop-up that says this, for your security, your phone currently isn't allowed to install unknown apps from this source. You can change this in settings. Click on settings, toggle that box, and then click install. Mine says update because I've already got this thing installed. If you do that, it will be installed and that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. So let me know if this was helpful for you. Hopefully this kind of puts this conversation to bed for the most part. People ask me all the time, what do I use on this phone? What do I use on the Duo 2? Well, hopefully this does answer that question. Guys, subscribe so you don't miss out on more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.